I know you guys do not have the same idea of what an exciting math problem is that I do. Okay. I know I geek out on this stuff, but here's another problem that I love. Why? Uh, because first of all, it's super typical of the GED and most students get overwhelmed by it, even though it's not that hard, but they just don't know where to start with all the information. So let's take a look at this. First of all, I'm going to go straight to the word problem. Can I just skip over this table for now? I'm going to come back to the table when I know what I'm looking for. And that way I don't get overwhelmed by information. So let me come down here. It says a frame store lists its prices in a table. Mm -hmm. Yep, we noticed. <laughs> to the nearest cent. So there's some rounding directions, but we won't follow rounding directions till the end of our problem. Okay. What is the price per inch of the wood for a medium frame? What is the price per inch of the wood for a medium frame. Super excited that they said to me, what is the anything per anything? Because as soon as somebody tells me what is the price per inch, I know right how to find that problem. I'm gonna start with the price. And then I'm gonna per it. Per literally means divide. Like literally, guys. That's why we abbreviate the word per often uh, with a slash um, when we're taking notes and stuff. So price per and notice this time, if you watch my other videos, we were finding the price per square inch of a canvas. This time we're just finding the price per inch. That's a hint. Now, it's the price per inch of what? Per inch of wood for a medium frame. So think about the way a frame works. A frame goes around a picture like this. You'll have a one part of the frame, and then another part, and then another part, and then another part. You basically take a picture and go around the outside with strips of wood in order to have a frame. Okay, So let's go ahead and go look for the information we need now. The first thing we need is the price of a medium frame. So let's come to our table. Here's my medium. I'm not going to look anywhere else. And now I want the price of a frame. Now don't be the foolish student who just grabs the first number they see with a dollar sign. This is the price of the canvas and I want the frame price. Pay attention to your headers on a table. So there's the frame price, so that's $50.95. You're probably thinking, gee whiz, that's really expensive. Yeah, frames are expensive, guys. These prices are no joke. So I'm gonna take the price of my frame. Now I need to divide by the inches. Now, students look over here and they see, oh, look, 12 inches, 15 inches. Which number do I use? Do I just add these two together? Do I multiply them because of the word by? What should I do? We need to pay attention to this phrase, not up here to know what to do with these numbers. It says, what is the price per inch of the wood for a medium frame? So if you frame this sucker, you're going to go all the way around. So yes, this is 12 inches, and this part of wood is 15 inches, but then how long is this piece? Well, just like the one across from it, it'll be 12. And how long is this piece? Well, just like the one across from it, it'll be 15 inches. I've got to get all that wood, all that wood, the total of that wood. Some of you savvy students might recognize this as a perimeter problem. But even if you never heard of the word perimeter in your life, you should see that I have to get wood all the way around my picture. How stupid would my picture look if I only had wood here and here? I need to frame it, go all the way around. So I'm going to add up all those dimensions to find how many inches of wood I need. So let's see, the 15 and 15 gives me 30. That's 24. I'm going to get 54 inches of wood total. So that will be the number of inches I divide by, 54 inches. Great. So I'm going to take my price, my 50.95, 50.95, and I'm using my TI-30XS calculator right now. And I'm going to divide or per it by that 54 inches, and I get this long nasty number, 0 0.943518519, and students panic, they don't know where to stop this number. Now's when we can pay attention to our rounding directions, or we could just use a little bit of common sense, but it says to the nearest sense. Well, where, does, where do cents end? We know that cents are the same as one hundredth of a dollar. Um, and so you're going to end here in the hundredths place. Or another way students think of it is there's two decimal places in money. And so I'm going to end my number right here. I'm going to throw away all these other uh, digits because they're smaller and smaller and smaller than cents. But it is important to examine this very first digit you're about to throw away before you get rid of it and ask yourself, is it big enough to matter? If it's five or higher, I'll need to round up to 95 cents. 
Well, it's not, it's less than five. And so this whole thing just goes away without making a difference to my number. And I see that I'm in 94. 94 what, or 0.94 what? This is 94 hundredths of a dollar, or as we call it, 94 cents per inch of wood. And that is my final answer. Once again, I think these problems are complex. They have a lot going on. So please do make sure that if you have a question, you drop it in the comments. I guarantee if you're wondering it, something someone else is wondering it. Uh, let's make this make sense.